Uh, did you want to? Did you want to? Uh, yeah. Do you want to intro us? I'm doing. I'm doing the intro. Okay, cool. Doing the intro. I'm doing it live. Fuck it, we're doing it live. Hi, I'm Marty Benson. We're live from the van. <laughs> Hello, friends, and welcome to episode 62 of From the Van. It's a podcast from my van, where I have conversations with people who have relationships with residential vehicles. I'm your guest, Marty Benson. Uh, John is a good buddy of mine that I met a couple of years ago, or, or give or take, at a Fiesta Island van life meetup, and we used to always call him Axeman because... Uh, we were very high and quite drunk when he showed up and, uh, he had this solo stove he was setting up and he just started chopping wood, man. And he was going at it. And I thought it was so hilarious, man. He was like trying to start the party and create the ambiance and whatnot. And it was hilarious. So we called him Axeman behind his back for a couple of years. And, uh, I've told him that now and he didn't try to beat me up and he certainly could. Um, <laughs> Anyway, uh, we've gotten to know each other, you know, slowly over the last couple of years, and he's a he's a really hilarious, super fun dude. Make, he cracks me up, and uh, and finally agreed to be on the podcast. Our schedules lined up and stuff, and so it was super cool to sit down and have a conversation with him. Um, just a little disclaimer: there's always a little bit of colorful language in the from the van podcast uh, because I don't believe in filtering out things that are not unethical. Um, this episode has a couple of little slightly more tawdry or risque topics. Uh, so if you're not into that, if I've made you uncomfortable before, you should probably leave now. Um, but I had a great conversation. Please enjoy episode 62 of From the Van. What's up, dude? Hi. Hi. Hey, man. Good nice seeing you again. Yeah, it's good to see you too, mm-hmm. man. This is um, fun. Doing a doing a, a podcast between two vans. Between two vans. Oh shit. Oh my god. Oh my god. We probably owe Zach Galifianakis some money now. I mean, it's it's, it's, it's different enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a parody. We're doing a parody a of parody. Jack Zach Jack Galifianakis's uh, yeah. show. Yeah. Between two vans. Because you always you're always gonna have a van, and obviously the other person's gonna have a van or some kind of vehicle, so. Between two vans. Generally, now that's where we're going. Now this is I, we have changed the name of the podcast to live. Between Two Vans. Holy shit! Live, oh, no. live on the podcast. Oh, I mean, worst case scenario, you can't get your handle back on the Van Life app. Now okay. we're between two vans. Now just between two vans. Yeah, but uh, and and I think as we negotiate this, we're also between two brands. Oh yes. Oh fucking terrible dad <laughs> joke. <laughs> This is happening to me, dude. I turned 40 in August, oh. and everything is a fucking horrible dad joke now. I've uh, Everything's punny. I, I, they have these uh, elote-flavored chips, corn chips at Trader Joe's, mm. and uh, I, I made eggs with cheese and dumped them on the chips uh, with some salsa yesterday, and I decided that they're called Chilla Quicklies. Chilla quickly's <laughs> because I didn't have to do all the whole recipe of the. I'm proud of you for cooking for, for cooking in your van. Good. I am fucking horribly lazy, not cooker. Why don't you do it, man? Uh I never cooked when I had a house. <laughs> That's right. So when you make it harder, why continue? Yeah, it's like I I mo- I started this lifestyle to like maintain my lifestyle, not to like mm-hmm. start a whole new one. Yeah. I still want to do what I do. You got a kitchen in your van? Um, I have okay. areas where this kitchen can be set up, like right. table space and such, and a double sink. No extractor, but a double sink. Yeah. Um, and so I could cook, and I have cooked in there. Yeah. Um, there's a funny story about why I hate moths. The last time I was cooking in there, um, I was set, had my little swivel seat up, my little swivel table up, and I was cooking the last like piece of bacon and like last little bit of fucking bell peppers I had. And this moth just like starts flying around, just attacking me, just yeah. attacking me. And I start swatting this motherfucker away, and I hit the fucking handle of the pan. Things go spinning in three sixty. Oh, it's all like, the food is everywhere. Every, it's like bacon grease. Oh my god! And, and bell peppers everywhere, and that's everything we had left to eat. And so I just laid down, and I was sad. And cried. I'm just sad and defeated. <laughs> that moth 
That moth life ended violently and quickly. <laughs> well, at least you got revenge, man. Oh, fucking moths. <laughs> My first night in Afghanistan as a contractor, I showed up with like no gear and like nobody cared that I was there. So they just fucking threw me in a, in a fucking literally a plywood box inside a tent. Uh, to sleep on a dirty mattress in my clothes because I had all my I had been very clever and it's like you know what I don't want to carry all my shit with me so I'm just gonna throw it in this box that I know is gonna arrive probably be up before I do right. did not arrive yeah. before I did and so I had to like suffer two days with only the clothes on my well, back well it was only two it. days I guess yeah it was still rough yeah I had a moth fly into my room that night and it for some reason been in the urinal in Afghanistan? Part. yeah it did flew, you kill that one too? Uh, it flew into my face and it was wet, and I was like, "Why is this thing wet?" And I looked, like, like smelled my face. I was like, "Why does it smell like piss?" It had been in the urinals. Oh no, dude! It's like this is my fucking first night here. What the fuck? I dude. stomped that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the one in your van was uh, just like reincarnated. Both times, the same, same moths. Don't like moths. Yeah. <laughs> Man, you had it rough in Afghanistan. Yeah. Let's talk about that. You. Uh, you were in the armed forces for a bit, right? That mm-hmm. you said that this was a contracting gig, right? Yeah. So this was, must have been pr- after Post, that. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, so what's the deal? I was uh, after, right after high school, joined the Marines. Didn't really have a. I was you know going to be either just working at Disneyland for the rest of my life. Uh, I was working at Disneyland at the time already um, during high school, just to like you know pay my pay my my way and. Um, just waiting for for my opportunity to go to boot camp. Right. And I was like 17. I was like hoping to be in boot camp like at 17, like still 17. But they ended up waiting until a week after I turned 18 to, to let me go to boot camp. Um, so did that. Ended up going in as an infantry marine. Uh-huh. And uh, just stayed around San Diego uh, for boot camp and then school of infantry in Pendleton. And then after that got shipped out to 29 Palms. And when I hit 29 Palms was when uh, President Bush at the time got on TV and said, Hey, Saddam, you've got 72 hours to vacate Iraq or we're going to war. Oh, shit. And uh, I'm sitting on like in like the transient barracks in 29 Palms. And it's the, the base is kind of split up in two sides. Like you've got like the comms and like the tankers and stuff and like all the support stuff. And on this side is like they keep all the infantry guys like segregated like like on the other side of a big main avenue he was like yeah. you should stay over here like do not go over here if you get caught over here you're in trouble like you're, you stay over there this is your hood and uh, that part of the base erupted in such a fucking primal roar I was terrified I was like that first moment I was like oh cause they were stoked they're ready to go fight yeah I mean wow. these guys had like been training for this for you know for and years and you're a kid and you're like I'm gonna get killed and I'm and I'm like what I was three months in boot camp, three months, three months in school of infantry. So I've been a Marine for six months. You're 18 and a half. Yeah, 18 and change. And it's like, congratulations. Mm-hmm. It's happening. It's like, wow. Fuck. Luckily, I got a quick reprieve and the unit I was assigned to was already in Japan, uh-huh. in Okinawa. So I got to go get fucked with for four months by my by my senior NCOs or not senior NCOs but like yeah they just like fuck fuck games the whole time just yeah. like we were like I got that transition period in the Marine Corps where like we were changing uniforms and trying to be a little softer than we were before but it's like oh but all of a sudden you're going to a war so uh-huh. like I had a whole new digital outfit that stood out completely from everybody else on right. base so it was like we just stood out and they were just like fuck with us constantly crazy so how long were you in the how, how long were you in the Marines? Uh, I did four years. And that was enough time to do do a four month uh, staycation in Japan, which was really nice. Dope. I got to like, yeah, I got to see. It was like I've never been to Hawaii, but I imagine this Hawaii's like it: beautiful, clear, tropical water, beautiful uh, weather. Um, I got really lucky and had a had a barracks room with like ocean front view. I could like throw a tennis ball into the water. So, like, it was pretty sick. And um, and then after that. Got back to 29 Palms, did a bunch of training, and then after that went to Al Assad, Iraq. Did a, a seventh, it's like a seven month deployment there, and we were like doing all kinds of dumb shit out, out to, we was like kind of had patrol bases there, but mainly stayed outside the wire all the time. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, it was like a lot of, a lot of IEDs. My first, my first patrol out, I, uh, I was driving the Humvee, and like, you know, did a little fishbone fishbone maneuver that we do, 
and got out of my vehicle, and I'm just like, ADD, fucking 18 year old, like, do do smoking, smoking a cigarette, like, you know, stomping my feet, checking my 15 and 20s, and like, I look under my feet, they're like, oh, there's a shiny plate. I turn up this shiny plate. Oh, that's that's weird. Oh, there's a wire to it. Oh, oh fuck. I'm standing on a fucking IED. You're like, on it. I'm standing on the fucking IED, and and at that point, like, I lose all all sense of. Uh, like military decorum and right. you know I'm supposed to call my 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 corporal like hey corporal like I'm sending out something but I was like um you dude <laughs> and he's like what the fuck you're sending me I was like IED <laughs> and he's like what he fucking runs over he's like yeah I was like I should move my truck he's like yeah you should move your truck like, just get back in my fucking Humvee and like move that shit oh, and then like the no. first sergeant was out with us and he fucking comes over and, and for some reason he wants to point his weapon at it like, <laughs> like, like pointing at the weapon at it was gonna make him feel safe for some, for some reason <laughs> so he's like the he walks up to this thing and like looks at it he's like yep that's an idea and does like a fucking massive ninja back ninja like leap backwards like 10 feet I swear he's like woo yep that's an idea and that was the first night so but you didn't set it off at all huh after I after I notified somebody that it had gone off, like he like t- told two guys to go fucking follow the wire down, and they saw somebody scurrying away. Luckily, oh, the wire that they used either wasn't um, connected properly or the battery was out of juice, uh-huh. and that's the only reason you I just got fucking. Lucky. I didn't fucking get turned to pink and miss on my first night out. Wow, that was fucking stupid. That is terrifying. That that turned like that two hour patrol turned to fucking like eighteen hour experience like sitting out there watching this piece of shit and like like checking the whole rest of the road right making sure like there's nothing else nothing else and waiting for EOD to come out put a little robot in fucking set a piece of C4 on it and make it go boom and then you know go back so they did they did blow it up eventually yeah but that was because you can't leave it there yeah um so you're this is your first this is your first experience in uh Mm -hmm. in deployment as a marine in a, in a relatively hostile country and you do four years of that and you didn't you didn't get enough you decided to be a contractor too or was it just the money's good yeah yeah and I wasn't doing um, I wasn't doing like trigger pulling contracting I was mm-hmm. like a, I worked for North Grumman a big defense contractor okay. and I was doing you know, logistics I was just doing like classified material handling like dealing with like radios and yeah. stuff like that which is like much easier work if still uh, in Kandahar so like got rocketed a lot so I got to like experience both sides of the military because like most of the military isn't infantry going outside the wire most of them are like inside the wire you know, they get they get deployed to a base right and maybe they'll do a convoy or two outside uh-huh. um, while they're on guard duty like outside perimeter um, or like they're inside doing you know general logistics cooking you know doing things right. and stuff for money and so I got to live both those lives of being like a outside kicking doors in and fucking dealing with IDs to like being inside and like helpless um, when there's rockets and mortars raining down on you right so it's and like, you're just in an office yeah <laughs> it's like, essentially oh right. internet's out what's going on up oh, up oh. Something blew up at the gate, so Jeez. we're not allowed to use the internet for eight hours until they figure out what's going on. So, that is heavy, man. That was my life until I was 33, 34. Okay. Yeah. Oh wow. So, Dang, you did. So you you did contracting for like ten or twelve years, huh? Crazy. Um, some of it was a lot it was like broken up I do six months out six months back like six months out year out come back yeah. or like stay out in Europe and travel and fuck around go to Ibiza go to fucking Turkey go to fucking Morocco you know you've been a lot of places Europe. that's I mean that's the that's the sunny side of that street I yeah. guess is like yeah, you get to travel and grip huh it's yeah a lot of a lot of first class business class travel yeah nice Hood yeah, Ridge, was, yeah. It was, uh, <laughs> got, I got really, got really fucking lucky to get that, get that gig. Yeah. It was a, uh, the buddy of mine that I was in the Marine Corps with, Nava. He's actually still with the company. Like him and his family just got moved to, uh, to uh, England to work on some program there. And like he got in a motorcycle accident. Like he was driving my Audi that day, and I thought he was, I crashed my Audi. Like we were in the field, 
I get a call like, hey, bro, fucking, I was in the hospital. Like, uh, what the fuck happened? Did he crash my fucking car? But he ended up like parking my car, taking his motorcycle out to go get a new tire, and some old man didn't see him and just like creamed him. And so uh, he got picked up by like Wounded Warrior Project, and they helped him get a get a gig, and like, kind of put me in touch with the fucking yeah. with the recruiter too, and and yeah, it was a thing. I got sexually harassed by my recruiter too. It was hilarious. Hmm. She was sending me booby pictures. I should have made booby pictures. Yeah. yeah, I should have made money off of that. <laughs> I paid off of that, but I didn't. I was just, I was just thrilled to get my little mailroom job and and go from there. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's wild. <laughs> so, did you grow up in Orange County? I'm assuming because the Disneyland thing. Uh, I grew up. I was born in Columbia. Moved to the states in 1990. And moved from like LA to Orange County so I went to school in like in Diamond Bar uh, then after my mom and her second husband or first husband actually got divorced finally uh, she, she moved in with my aunt in Anaheim so okay and then I was like commuting to school and yeah. working at Disneyland right okay so when does uh when does van life happen? Van life happens. I was uh. It was pretty shortly after that, right? Because yeah. Yeah. So I got got the van in 2018, and I, and I got fired from that job in 20 in 2018, like November. And I got the van like that's that summer. So I was like already doing like the the. Uh, Overlandish kind of thing, yeah. with like a forerunner and a rooftop tank. Uh-huh. And I just like oh, this is fucking lame. I hate putting this thing up and down. Right, it's inefficient. Mm-hmm. It's just like it's, it's like, and so I ended up selling the forerunner to my ex girlfriend, and then buying this rig. And then as I was like in, uh, installing the floor and the installation, I got a I got a call from my job saying, "Yeah, we're no longer your services." Did a some like fucking years long federal investigation that we got caught up in. It was fucking oh. terrible. I got I got in my entire my entire digital life subpoenaed. Whoa! Like everything. It's like if you've ever been under a federal invest, like I understand what those like when people like talk about when the news talks about people getting uh, un- being under a federal investigation yeah. and getting their fucking laptop seized and all their shit seized. Right. Like I've been there. It's like it fucking sucks. Whoa! Hey, I got a I got a letter in the mail from Apple and from Google like a year after all that happened telling me oh yeah by the way um, the federal government fucking subpoenaed your shit and we handed it over so. oh so they got everything they dude everything they knew everything they, so. they know what your kinks are now and and, and <laughs> the, big, the biggest thing I was worried about is like it's like Oop. right yeah so right so they it, it turned to a thing with all that so I just like I we parted ways Amicably, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, but I'm, well, and I mean the in, the invis- investigation didn't happen because you were smoking weed. It was like something else. Oh no, it was, it was and something. This is just something that came up. It was something. It was something like much higher than me. Sure, know? sure. And it was just like they, they just encompass a lot right. of people, and everyone, a lot of people got their got their lives dissected, uh, turned upside down. Yeah. But, wow, that's crazy. But it's, I mean, as it should be, if you're working for the federal government and have a secret clearance. Like, yeah. I never want to do it again. Like, I'm... Right. Fuck, no. I'm good. Uh, yeah. I don't know, like, PTSD or whatever. I, I, I don't like being asked that many questions. It's like, sets uh-huh. up my paranoia. And I'm like, the fucking the empire is all the business. And like yeah. It. Yeah, that's crazy. And those private companies, too, like, they have... They have access to information that they may or may not have to hand over, but I imagine when it's in that sort of situation, they just do it. And this is all in 2000 and... A... Fourteen? Uh-huh. When it all started? Yeah, fourteen. And like, it was like a fucking long-ass thing, like five years span, and it was like getting pulled into like interviews... Like in Abu Dhabi here, and Whoa. Like all the fucking like, private little private little fucking offices that didn't know existed. Is like they're interrogating you and shit, like asking like, you questions about yeah, what like, your what your higher ups are doing and how they're using you and, and shit. And, well, like first they presented like just like a 
can you explain to us what you said in this text message is like and it's like just all every single text message that you've ever like yeah. written out is in a binder right it is fucking terrifying holy crap terrifying dude. yeah that's a lot of information about you man I don't I don't really consider myself a very private person like I meet somebody and I just tell them vomit my entire life story onto them but I still can't imagine what it would be like having somebody go that deep into my like dick pics and whatnot. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's heavy. Look, I've never been too much of a dick pic sender, but yeah, you know, Jesus you don't have to. People are sending you boobies just because. Yeah, solicited <laughs> boobies. So let's talk about your van. You've got uh, was it 2018 uh, four wheel drive Sprinter? Yes, sir. 144. No. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Excuse me. Um, I got her as a as a regular cargo van, and I bought her up in Portland okay. from Zen Bands. Zen Bands. Um, what's the what's the, I don't know Zen Bands. Zen what's Bands, their deal? They uh they built out this kitten like they were huge and they're big. Good. They make a really gorgeous product I love yeah. I love the look of my vans like the bamboo and the carved aluminum like well, so your cabinets were like already installed and all that they weren't installed they, okay. they just gave me the shit on the fucking floor with like no oh. padding in between you put it in yeah it's yeah. like I gotta drive the shit all the way back to San Diego you guys can you know like present it a little nicer for fucking 25 grand assemble it yeah. not, no not assemble it just like you know package it yeah like it was like I worked in shipping so I was like you know if you're delivering an expensive product to somebody's like prepare it yeah it's like, what the fuck it's like nothing it's like just but there you go like, thanks uh, so I don't know it's slick looking it is it is great looking is is all of your um is all your furniture your bed frame and all of that and cabinetry and all that that's all from them uh the ceiling the wall panels um 80% of them are and the cabinetry and the bed frame. Okay. Yeah. Like I wanted something lightweight and modular, and this like I can take this thing apart if I, you know, get in a get in an accident where this thing's totaled. Right. Just get a pickup truck and I can tear everything out. Yeah. In, in Put an it hour. into a new van. Yeah. Yeah. So, what about the what about the galley and stuff? Uh, like this where stuff, your fridge is? This is a uh, yeah. But this is I got help from a homie Amos, who's a welder, also a van lifer, uh-huh. and. During the pandemic, after the girlfriend and I broke up, and I just like got back into the van, and I realized like, all I've got in here is a shitter, and and like I had my one little table that right there. Yeah, and I can make do, but it's like really hard without like an elevated spot, and, like, right. nowhere to put the trash can, uh-huh. no sink. Yeah, so it's like really hard. To, like all I had was just, like this one tank back here with like a little bit of running water. So right, it was, like it was really really rough. Yeah, really really rough. And like nobody, like nobody could like come out. Like I, luckily, my my friend Carly let me stay on her in her parking spot because she wasn't using a car at all. So I like just had her parking spot off 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 the street mm-hmm. in my parking. So I was like, I didn't get fucked with or anything, but it was rough. Yeah. And, like nothing was open. Like a, yeah. Just like hanging out in OB, hiding out. Like I don't know what to do. Like, right, what's gonna right, happen right. in the world? Yeah. Like, the helicopters flying overhead. Like quarantine has been established. Stay in your homes. Yeah, like. Yeah. Like when did the when does the boom starts? <laughs> like, right. When did the boom starts? Like yeah. I'm expecting like okay, World War II to break out. Uh huh. Um, but after if things chilled out, kind of reached out to my homie. Like he had a garage here in OB, so I parked my van next to him, next to his garage, and uh, we assembled this in uh, in about a week and a half. And I've taken it out and like re-spray painted and like repainted and just kind of try to make it look a little better. But it's like honestly, it's just like two by or one by one inch tubing welded and did a little little grinding no, yeah very I mean, functional yeah and it bolts out I could take this whole thing out in like 10-15 minutes yeah cool and then I got like I just kind of used whatever scrap I had like I spent a lot of money on on the uh, the cabinetry and the Zen Vance kit and the van so like I still want things to look decent but I, I don't want to spend any more money so right. like I did flooring myself um, I was working at, um, it's like basically interning at Master Overland. At sure. Josh, Josh's shop. He uh, moved to, he moved to Florida, but he uh, he did my my power system back there. Okay. Really sturdy power system. Taking that thing, 
down some fucking horrible shitty roads and beat it up on on uh, on like overland trips with like yeah. sprinters and you know never failed. Stays where it's at. What what is your what's what's your electrical system like? Uh, I've got a zero volt battery, and that's the Master Overland Josh's ba- own proprietary battery uh-huh. thing. That's like it's really ratchet. It's got a built in. BMS, so okay. I can just like Bluetooth straight to the battery and like Ooh. monitor, monitor straight to my phone, so I don't have to like have a separate monitor, battery monitor, and all that fancy. That's dope. Yeah. And then I've got a Victron 2000 watt inverter, the cable management system, the uh, the solar management little console thing, uh-huh. and I've got a 100 watt solar panel up there and inverter charging. Okay. Cool. Um. So what what about parking? Are you still you're you're staying at a friend's private parking space or whatever? Yeah, so mainly in OB. Yeah, when I when I started doing van life, I was living at the spot like on on Sunset Cliffs, and my homie lived there, and I moved the roommate in, and I was like kind of like I got the van, like this is this is what's gonna happen. You guys are cool with it? Cool. If not, yeah, I'm like, I pay the pay the uh, cable bill uh-huh. uh, like the cable and the uh, internet bill yeah and use a spot use a shower great and when I'm right now I'm using it more often because I'm going to school welding uh-huh. school I just finished today but i um, going to be doing another four months of welding school so it's convenient to park there you know live my life in OB and then commute to to uh, Barrio Logan yeah yeah that's epic to have access to that especially we were kind of talking about this earlier like um, in in the city of San Diego, which Ocean Beach is part of, um, they have pretty onerous van life law, laws. And like we were saying, like if you have a clean, newish van, you're probably not getting messed with. A little wealth self, like they won't, they can't right. really tell the difference between you and your you know, neighbor who just bought a, a brand new Sprinter van. Because like, right on Sunset Cliffs, yeah, there's like Sprinter vans everywhere. So yeah. Yeah, and a lot of them are like swanky. But if you're living in a dumpy old like, yeah, it's unfortunate. Like, duct tape yeah. window or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's too bad because the people who need it the most are the ones that get fucked with, right? Yeah, but they're also the ones making a mess and like dumb right shit. And sure, like, come on, sure, come on. A lot of that, a lot of uh, stems from other issues, sort of unrelated problems. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. definitely. After a full year of this, I'm finally more comfortable with it, and like uh-huh. uh, admitting it to myself. Like I live in a van, it's like, it's like full time, and it's like not feel so judged or like not feeling so homeless per se. Well, that's that's one of my favorite things actually to talk about on the podcast is like, what's your relationship? Do you still have a close relationship with your mom? Um. Okay. Um. I, but the reason the reason I bring that up is because uh, I'm tight with my parents, and a lot of times I make decisions that they are not happy with. Mm. Living in the van is definitely one of those decisions, and so I'm always curious, sort of, where people are coming from. Because some people are like, "Oh yeah, my dad, like my mom, my mom gave me this idea. My dad helped me build the van. Blah 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 blah." And then like. And then for a lot of other people, it's like, oh, this is a thing that I'm doing, but I do feel like a little bit ostracized and a little mm. bit judged in here and there and, and stuff. And so, um, what is your what's your process in terms of like sort of coming to terms with that? Like, uh, homeless is a is a word that a lot of people use as a derogatory thing, sort of thing. And then I know tons of people who are living uh, sort of dirtier, more disheveled lifestyles than I have who live in a brick and mortar house. You know what I mean? So it's like, I'm not homeless, I'm houseless. And so I I sort of waffle back and forth between how I feel about that uh, from day to day. Uh, and you mentioned it, so I'm just sort of curious what your what your trajectory and sort of path has been. Oh. Do, 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 coming to terms with that, dealing with it. I never had to really worry about what I think my family's been like uh, supportive of it they're cool with yeah. whatever decision I make it's not like I'm actually homeless and uh, des- uh, destitute or anything right so sure it's not like I'm begging for money and, yeah. so it's like yeah do you yeah um, 
but come to terms with feeling homeless, I think has what's helped is being having a community. Yeah. And like like having being staying here it'll be like when I've traveled solo in the van then it gets rough it's like okay I don't know where to fill my water I don't know right. you don't have a toilet or if it's like you know you get flies in your composting toilet or if you're like shit I don't know what to do That then it gets rough because then you're making all those micro decisions and it's like really taxing Right. but with a community I was no uh, there's somebody who like it's happy to see me like around Right. it's like yeah, either my homie Mike that's down the street and like hey he notices when my van's not there uh-huh. uh, my homie Dan knows or my you know his dad his dog misses me it's like, so he, I saw the community but yes. you know like, just, like, I have a separate bedroom and this kind of come and goes like please so without the community it's it's, it's a much, much rougher life yeah uh, but it's, it's, it's just like a separate, it's a rolling bedroom. Right. But yeah, that's the way I look at it, man. I go to I go to visit my friends and stuff and uh, different cities and whatnot. I went to school on the East Coast. I grew up on the East Coast and I've traveled around a decent amount. And when I go places, people are like, you know, you can stay inside. We have an extra bedroom. And I'm like, no, dude, no, I live in here. You know, it's like I brought my bed. I'm cool. Uh, I, I know my bong is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's... Uh, well, and um, since Colette and I have parted ways, we, we still keep in touch. And she tells me, she's like, she's like, sometimes I wake up in the bedroom at her mom's house where she's been staying. She's like, I'm so frustrated that I have to get up and go into another room to take a piss. She's like, I wish I'm thinking about putting a pee bottle in the bedroom and in the in the car. Because like when you drive places in the van, you don't even think about like oh, I probably ought to go because it's going to, when I get to the place, there might not be a toilet there. Like, I never think about that because I got a place to take a piss all the time. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the emptying out of the uh, the urine the urine traps with, with the female partner in the van is always kind of a ugh, situation. I don't know. How's that? What do you mean? I don't know. It's like, cause I always end up doing it. It's like, uh-huh. it's, my, it's my male machismo thing, but it's like, it smells like my piss... Like I got my little jug bottle, but then I went, went out to empty out the uh, the nature's head one. It's like just uh, concentrates, yeah, it's harder, and then it's fucking terrible. Huh? <sighs> you got to look into the pee style, man. It's just a little apparatus that uh, allows a woman to pee like she's got a dick. Ooh. Uh, seriously, living in the van for like two and a half years with Colette, uh, we peed into an orange juice bottle, and I spilled more than she did. Yeah. Like she's fucking super accurate with that thing. Um, and you know, if, if if a woman's gonna be there, you know, it's it's hard to like uh, to learn to do it immediately. But if they're gonna stick around for a while, mm-hmm. it's certainly a worthwhile. And having worthwhile like thing. N- newbie girls like that are, are not in, don't know the van life at all, and like yeah, yeah, clean yeah. Clean up after those messes is fucking, <laughs> can't get mad. And it's like, Great, yeah. I, I I subjected you to this. Oh, yeah. and, and you rolled with it, and so we're cool now. But like, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, speaking, speaking of, I, I want to bring this up. Speaking of uh, newbie van life girls uh, coming into the van, you informed me earlier that you've had a medical procedure done that oh, I, I of which I am envious. I'm gonna grab a fresh cigarette for this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Take your time. Take your time. Oh yeah. So the vasectomy. I got my vasectomy in um, in 2019. Yeah. Yeah, in later 2019, and there's a post actually from my ex, my uh, my my uncle's ex girlfriend, who's who always admired, gorgeous woman, very intelligent, fucking super rad, Johnny, um, and like she made a post. I don't know even know like I can't remember what it said, but it was like. He was like, that's right. It was like some meme, but it was like, that's fucking right. It's like, I'm just getting a fucking bisectomy. So there's like a split <laughs> in like, fuck this. Like, I'm tired of playing this Russian roulette. So I know I don't want to fuck trophy. So, don't want one. So, maybe it's like, stems from like, like, roughish childhood or just knowing. I just don't want one. I don't want to deal with it all. Yeah. So it's, like, it's a fucking massive yeah, financial financial like hardship 
Um, oh my god, dude! Hardship on it's hardship on you know your partner's body, on their finances, on the entire families. Like, yeah. You know. D- divorce like, happens way yeah. faster than than. And most kids now, most kids' parents now are divorced. Like, yeah. So it's not. But like, what I'm saying is, like, a divorce is easy compared to a child. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. I. I uh, I've got a buddy who. As soon as he hit his deductible, he was like, yep. And I've, I've got that same thing in the back of my head, dude. And I'm like, whenever whenever I get into the hospital for some other reason, yeah. I'm getting guess, transferred. See, I guess I thank uh, thank Trumpy Poo for that because he made, he made that law where if like they can't service you uh, with the VA, if they can't service you within like 30 days, they, they send you out. And so I've been getting all my procedures like at UCSD. Huh. It was, it was an interesting thing. Walking in there and getting my bisectomy. It was a, uh, it's a training, it's a training uh, hospital. Yeah. It is what it is. People gotta get trained. Mm-hmm. Um, so like a Latin nurse, you know, doing the prepping, and I had a, a an Asian like Asian doctor, and then like an Indian doctor, and, like both, you know, both working down there on my balls. Yeah. Like one was taking one one nut, the other taking the other one. <laughs> like I could tell, I could tell the difference in experience. <laughs> There was a lot like yanking on the left side. The right side was like a little more traumatized at the end. But. So wait, what? You're just like locally anesthetized for locally this, but you're anesth- wide awake for yeah. the whole thing. Yeah, that's heavy. Yeah, I, I I I did welt up in tears a little bit, like when I hear it, but I felt like oh god, <laughs> when I felt like the snips. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But it was all emotional. It wasn't physical. Like you didn't feel them. You heard them. You feel you feel like the the slight pinch. Yeah. <laughs> and in the tying and then at that moment you realize like fuck it's over like now I really can't make a butt trophy yeah um, the passes it's like it's great decision dude. you made yeah and um yeah. uh let's talk about let's talk about welding you are congratulations you're certified um welder as yeah. of today yeah. right and you're going to continue to go, go to school to work with different materials soon, right? Yeah, get some. Uh, though the next step is doing uh, learning TIG and working with stainless steel and aluminum. Okay. So like, that's aluminum. Yeah. This is steel. The uh, a lot of the better, better, higher quality like the luminous roof, roof rack. That's all TIG and right. aluminum. A lot of the cool shit that's lightweight and very expensive is all aluminum. Right. A lot of the uh, band builders out there, like you watch the Instagram, like they're posting uh, openings for welders and you know, they need TIG and yeah. they want a lot of experience, but I'm sure they'll take a newbie who at least has uh, a a fondness for vans and for van life and knows the, the in and outs of right, sure. vans. Right, sure. Um, and so, but that's sort of part of your plan, right? Is is to work on vans and, and build stuff for vans? Yeah, so uh, currently, I mean, I'm going to go work with Terex with Alex and Jenny mm-hmm. and weld stuff for them, do installs, cool. uh, build build up the company. Yeah. It's a great opportunity there. It's where I wanted to be. I, I've i worked in a few other shops um, just as like a little apprentice shop hand, just like didn't really have much experience in building shit. Right. Like I, when I got my kit. Uh, I was like, all right, today's the day. I'm going to start working on this. And I was like, oh, hey, how do I install? It's like, oh, yeah, just go get some rim nuts and some 80 20 bolts. And I was like, what's that? Go <laughs> some quarter 20 bolts. I was like, ah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So at that moment, I figured out how how extremely novice and green I was and like how little shit I knew. Like, I've, I've only built like some ply room. Uh, rooms and tents in, in Afghanistan and like, like bunkers and like dumb shit like that but not like anything pretty anything right that's like meant to 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 survive rolling down you know really rough roads in Death Valley and like doing, yeah. doing fucking really rad off-road trails and, mm-hmm. and to be lightweight and, and not squeak and not fall apart you know, it's, yeah it's learning a lot so I'm really glad I uh I met Alex and Jenny and like Alex is a fucking amazing amazing you know master craftsman and knows a lot of shit and so 
I, uh, I've always felt unworthy or just very unprepared to to be in the industries. That's why, like, I went to welding school. Okay, I need to at least have something I can offer. Like, right. Yeah, I, I can't carpentry. I can't, <laughs> I can't wood well. Yeah. Um, um, I can business things, but, like, nobody needs more business things in, in mm. the band industry. He's fucking needs to sell themselves. No one right. needs a fucking business guy or a fucking a sales guy. Yeah. Not really, but they have them. Um, so I wanted to, to learn a trade. Sure. Learn a trade, something. Like, even if it doesn't work out with Alex Jenny, like, I can always go somewhere else. And sure, that's going to be super well, useful. Well, feed myself. Yeah. Um, they are great. We're both uh, pretty tight with them. And one thing I do know, just from being around, I built a decent amount of my van with Alex's tools at his shop. And he helped me sort of lay out and, and uh, hook up my electrical system. And one thing that I have learned about being around him is that uh, I think if he can, he'll teach you whatever you, whatever you want to know. Mm-hmm. But if you're not proficient at it, he's not going to let you do it because he's a fucking perfectionist. You know what I mean? He's a so, he's, he's be <laughs> yeah, he's got a. Which is why their vans come out so good. He's, yeah, like, you got. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm. Uh, armchair diagnosing him with PTSD just like I do so like freak, freak out about little fucking things but like like when it comes to like big things like okay we're focused like, okay this is not a big deal we can figure this out but like little fucking things blow us up <laughs> okay where do you think his PTSD comes from let's gossip is it just from being German uh I mean, German yeah <laughs> that'll it's do it probably residual residual trauma from World War 2 I think so it's like, <laughs> thing. yeah yeah. Childhood trauma, like childhood traumas, like the like guy I've got. So uh-huh. I understand. I think that's what I mean. When I uh, when I hear you he's, talk he's about patient, he's patient with me. Yeah, yeah, he tries. <laughs> uh, when I hear about you guys, like your trips that you do off roading, that my van, my two wheel drive, weak ass van, definitely is not going on. Uh, I hear about these these off road like four wheel off roading trips and stuff, and I'm like, it's really good that my van as a vehicle can't handle that because I'm pretty sure that my craftsmanship on the furniture and the cabinetry that I put in in the van wouldn't handle it either. <laughs> so it's lots of people learn a lot of hard hard, hard lessons the first time their their, their van goes on a, on a on even like the gentlest trail. And shit starts flying open, yeah. things start flying out, lap starts are flying, fucking milk comes pouring out of there. <laughs> this guy, Elvis, like on one of the first van trips he was on, he uh, had a full size fridge in his van and forgot to like put the put the bungee cord in place. He had a full gallon of milk fly out of his fridge. Because like, it was like a a really steep right hand turn we had to make. Yeah. And that shit flew open, fucking whole gallon of milk exploded on his floor and he had like cedar flooring with like foam insulation underneath oh no it was cheesy in there and then uh, there was mice in there was like, mice then you got mice of course they're gonna come in it feels like cheese right that's like, disgusting a lot of lessons learned there. yeah um where where have you guys been uh doing like four wheel off-roading stuff I took my rig out to to I've been out to, you know, local deserts, did a lot of those trails. When she was empty, I, I definitely took her bombing down, down Anza Borrego, a bunch of, like, trails out there. Yeah. It's, like, really mobbed because it was light and had this four-wheel drive. Super bouncy. Like, yeah, super bouncy. Very loud. Very uncomfortable, but I got through it. And um, after I got the, the Agile rip kit put in, I've been, I went all the way to Michigan with her. Um, oh, yeah. We were, like, in the same yeah. neighborhood around Detroit. We ended up not being able to... Mm-hmm. Hook up together. What were you up there for? Uh, I was taking a trip with my ex girlfriend Lee, and we were visiting some of my marine buddies. Uh, okay. Went to see some of her her friends and family in Missouri and in um, yeah, up there, in that general vicinity. And then Missouri we, too. Uh, and then he dropped into uh, Michigan, went all the way into Detroit, and then went back back up to the UP. And the UP did a lot of off roading there because, like, every single other road, like, it's like a big grid, and like every other road is an off road right next to it. So you can, like, just 
crisscross the whole UP off road. Wow. It's like super sandy and squishy. And, like, uh-huh. Like you're like, oh god, I'm gonna get stuck and stuff. I'm gonna get me. <laughs> <laughs> What's this agile rip kit that you're talking about? I don't uh, know what that means. Basically, they take, they put a coilover over the the stock blisting shock that's there then they add another shock to the front to help with body roll mm-hmm. and then they upgrade your leaf springs uh, to match the weight of the vehicle okay so you should have it like pretty much complete when you take it in to get to get weighed and right. they'll add the right leaf spring package in there cool so, and you can tell the difference when you it drives yeah. like a fresh Subaru like after oh really like, oh dude it's like Dope. so sharp yeah like WRX like uh-huh. And then I got my BFGs. I, got, I had my first BFGs that came with the van. Um, I got... I These rode are the tires those, you're yeah. talking about, yeah? I okay. rode those for 55,000 miles, and I wore them down to the knobs and, like, had slits down the side because mm-hmm. we were, like, taking them off-road, and they, like, you know, slow air leaks, whatever. But still works. Still great tires. Yeah, cool. Got a fresh pair. I put three holes in my uh, in my rear one, so it's got another slow leak in the sidewall from going to Death Valley. A couple weeks ago. Yeah. Luckily, I've got, uh, got a homie warranty over at, at uh, Four Wheel Parts. So. A homie warranty? Well, it's a, it's a proper warranty. One of my homies works there. So oh, okay. Was, yes. Nice. Covered because I never had a warranty for on tires. So it's right. First time's like, oh, God. That's sidewall damage. like unrepairable. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, well, what haven't we, what haven't we covered? No. Uh, how long do you... Do you see an end to to residing in a van? You tired of it? How long you been in full time? Uh, coming up on a little over a year now. Okay. And as long as my friends are like, cool with like the the arrangement, like semi symbiotic relationship of like me, like having, having a shower and like, right, right. being in the parking spot, and like I take off and be there. As long as that works out, and you know, don't like get into another like, maybe a committed relationship or like yeah, it's time to get place. Right. It's like, you know, yeah. It's open ended. Yeah. So it's when it's convenient. I feel that. That's sort of where I'm at. Is like I don't see a reason yet. Yeah. I do miss. I do miss flushy poopers. Flushing poopers. So oh, nice. let's talk about that because I don't have a crapper in the van. Yeah. I just only poop at Vaughn's and yeah. Ralph's or the park here or whatever it is, you know? Uh, what, what do you got? Nature's head? I, yeah, I've got a nature's head. I've just become too delicate in my older age. Like, I, I just fucking... Oh. I went to... I was chilling at... What do you mean? Like, I was chilling at, at, at Dog Beach uh, a year ago, like, right after... I think right before they, they, uh, they locked shit down and hanging out there. I was like, okay, I'm going to try hanging out in my van all day here at Dog Beach and like, okay, i got to take a shit but I don't want to drive all the way back to fucking to Sunset Cliffs and... Like, okay, I'm gonna try to go take a shit at, at Dog Beach. I walked in there. I uh, just like I got in there. So, oh uh, yeah. And I've I've spent a quality amount of time in 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 dirty ass fucking you know <laughs> fucking blue room with little shitters right. and uh, Porta Luz and all that shit. And I had lots of experiences in those. And it's like, but it's like now I just cannot. Like, yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, I feel like I feel like public restrooms in OB are probably on a different level than a lot of places. Fucking rough, you know. And that's rough. Yeah, <laughs> I actually ended up uh, making a making a barter with a with an AR-15 <laughs> for for my <laughs> for the shitter. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. You traded a gun for a crapper? Yeah, that's a fucking great story, yeah. dude. <laughs> Uh, Alex like just held on to my rifle for a while when I was like like I don't know if I have the money for this right now but I really want the crap he's like I really want an AR he's like you uh-huh. got to hold it and own one for a little while but then he's like I don't really want this anymore I was like alright I'll just pay you I'll pay you the money I have the money now for it so uh, I ended up just buying it back and yeah. it back but it's fun yeah I I don't we had this conversation when we were building this van which ended up being like a month and a half before the coronavirus lockdown happened, but I figured out how to put a very low impact shower into the van, which was a huge lifesaver in terms of Yeah, the of misty like, system? What's that? The little mister? Yeah. 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 Um, but like, I still don't want a toilet in my van. I just haven't, I haven't gotten there yet. 
it's great for it's great when it's fresh and new and like right now I think I'm having a little bug problem there so mm-hmm. yeah but, but I'm on camping and it's fresh and it's, you know it's, it's great yeah it great. those things are like a grand too though mm-hmm. yeah. that's, why, that's why I traded a fucking $1,500 <laughs> AR-15 <laughs> those only cost $1,500 I'm not a gun person so I don't know shit about this yeah. that's yeah that's re- that's really inexpensive. One day waiting period. Yeah, I got it back when 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 everybody thought Obama was gonna take all our guns away. <laughs> like, oh God, I better get one now. Or Obama's gonna take my gun. <laughs> now Biden's gonna take our guns. Oh, guns. They're rad, but oh, not everyone needs them. I've never shot a gun. What? Yeah, dude. Can I take a shooting? I've shot a BB gun. I've never shot a pistol. I've never shot a shotgun or a rifle or anything I'll take you shooting you're gonna take me shooting <laughs> I want to see if you'll turn to a liberal for crying <laughs> <laughs> no I really do anticipate that when I do it I'm gonna be like this is really powerful feeling you know it is like I. that's what I hear so many I people didn't, say I never I never shot a gun I like held a gun but never shot a gun until like boot camp yeah and I was like <sighs> oh Cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I got to shoot fucking machine guns and uh-huh. ah, grenade launchers. Yeah. Grena- you've shot a grenade launcher. Yeah. I Throwing imagine. Grenades. I mean, of yeah. course that makes sense. But that's fucking intense, dude. Shot at, shot at people. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Shot at they shot at you. Been blown up. Oof. Been blown up a few times. What does that mean? Uh, IEDs. It's like cruising down just like like on the truck or what yeah like in, a, in, a, in an unarmored unvis like we were this was back in 2003 we didn't have like the new MRAP or any of that shit we right. had fucking straight Vietnam era unarmored humvees so it's just yeah. like a heavy truck basically it's, like, it's a sweet 4x4 vehicle right with like plastic doors and a glass windshield uh-huh. so when an ID hits it it just fucking turns to fucking trash wow everything in it goes a few times just like blast it the whole vehicle is like thrown to the side shit starts falling off the top people are like knock the fuck out like, you alive you don't know go Whoa. Like, should we shoot back shoot back at what <laughs> yeah right <laughs> the ground like like your dude who was like aiming his yeah. his uh, weapon at the yeah at the IED yeah, people like sorry like you hit by an IED so like you're, you're victimized at the moment it's like there's nothing you can really do right so like what did we shoot back it's like what do you if you shoot back what are you gonna hit like, nobody's around you're gonna cause more trouble than you you know right. you hit a child and you, yeah, at that point you're coming to drive back <laughs> so it's a heavy situation like stop shooting yeah um what else What's the what's the what's the rest of the story? What do we miss? I'm trying to think. I think we got everything, man. Yeah. Uh, thank you for doing this. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a minute. It's, it's been wonderful being uh, John Hamarillo for the last hour. I feel, I feel whiter and more privileged all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> being Marty Benson. <laughs> All right, man. Well, uh, yeah. Cheers for doing this. And cut. All right, guys. We did it. That was episode 62 of From the Van. Uh, I really appreciate it if you stuck around listening this long. Uh, sometimes I wonder why you do it, and I'm glad that you're enjoying yourself. Um, had a great hang with John. I look forward to seeing him again soon. And uh, if you didn't pick up on who he was talking about, our dear friends Jenny and Alex run a company called Terra X. They build exquisite um, overlanding camper vans, and uh, John's going to be working with them. They've um, been super gracious in helping me with my quote-unquote DIY builds uh, over the last couple of years, and um, they're a great company, good people, and I've recorded two podcasts with them. So if you're curious about that and you haven't, you're not familiar with them, maybe go back and listen to those podcasts. Find Terra X Build on Instagram. And uh, oh, one other thing. Um, today is the 27th of April, 2021. And on the 14th through the 16th, 
is Tiny Fest, California at Del Mar Fairgrounds. So if you're gonna be close by, maybe consider picking up a ticket to that, come by and say hi, you can point out all the flaws in my amateur build. And um, if you're not local, I think they have a live stream thing where you can kind of participate in the event even at a distance, because that's a thing that we had to do over the last year, and hopefully good things come up, come from it. Thank you for listening to From the Van. We will see you again on Tuesday of next week with another podcast. I don't know who it's going to be yet, but I'm sure it's going to be adequate. From the Van, between two vans.